Welcome back to Design Smith. I'm a huge fan of the color orange and these old vintage soda signs. That's surprisingly hard to say. So I figured what I'd do is since one of my favorite shoegaze bands is Slow Crush, I would adapt this same idea into a promo poster for their album Hush. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today in Illustrator and Photoshop. Before we get started, please subscribe to support the channel. All right, so let's move these out of the way here. They're all grouped together so I can easily move them. And I'm gonna lay down some type here just to get it on the board. And I absolutely love this font right here. It's got a really cool vintage vibe to it. So we are gonna go with this. All right, I want Crush to be a little bit bigger here. And normally I would kern this, but I'm gonna create outlines, ungroup everything, so I can move everything individually. It just makes it a lot easier because if I were to kern, then it's gonna keep the R in the back there, and I want it to be up front. And we still have that overlap there, but we can fix that in a second. So we have to grab the black part of this type right here, and then I'm gonna go into my outline view so I can actually see where these letters are ending up with each other. Okay, now we're back in our normal view, and I'm gonna select all of these. I'm gonna go up to Object, Live Paint, and Make. And now I can actually paint on the inside of these letters here. So I'm gonna color drop on the white, every single one of these. Now these actually have white as part of their letters. So we're gonna select this, go to Object, Expand, Expand Object Fill and Stroke, hit OK. And now we need to ungroup everything. And then we need to ungroup again. And now I'm just gonna grab the parts where these little pieces overlap. And there you go, we've got a really cool vintage vibe here. And then I'll just do the same thing for the top. All right, it took a little bit of finagling, but we got it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and group these together and do the same thing here. So now we've got two units of type here. One is small on the top and the other one is big on the bottom. And they already have that vintage vibe to it. So any effects and filters that we add to it is just really gonna help us land it. All right, so I'm gonna select both of these, select this as our key object so we can center this. And then we'll grab this and just kind of move it right around there. It may have gotten uncentered again, so let's center that back up. And now we'll select everything and group it. And a lot of these vintage signs were in landscape, so we're just gonna keep it in landscape. I'm gonna do 24 by 18. And the logo of the soda really did take center stage here, so we're gonna do the exact same thing. And I'd like to find a font that's very close to this Drink Delicious right here. Okay, so I found this font on Adobe Fonts, and it's very similar to the Drink Delicious font, and I was just timing it here, and just now it took 49 years to activate. All right, so we'll move this up here to the top. And obviously we need to size it down right about there. And we'll say bye right here at the end, the new album by Slow Crush. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this a background to make it easier to work with. And this is already looking really, really cool. However, the album itself is actually blue. And we got one little straggler right here who just refuses to be painted. There we go. You don't make my life easy, do you, Adobe? Okay, so I was originally thinking blue, but I really do want something that's nice and electrifying, just like these signs are. So I'm gonna take this orange, and we're gonna plug it into color.adobe.com. I'm gonna go over here to split complementary to get a nice light blue that's kind of in the same vein as this orange. Okay, that's looking really cool. And now I wanna take this blue and set this as the main color and then grab this purple right here and maybe make it a little bit darker and we'll make this purple our drop shadow. Are there any stragglers here? Yes, there's one right there. All right, I think this is looking really nice. Let's see, we're gonna try this in white or purple. I think white works better. And I'll just do this right here at the bottom. Maybe I'll switch this over to italic. And this came out October 22nd, 2021. And I like the idea of just kind of separating them and keeping them a little bit far apart there. All right, one thing we need to do before I forget, just like I always do, is to change everything that's pure white into nearly white. Because we're gonna be adding some distressed effects in here and we want those effects to show up. They will not show up if the text is pure white or pure black for future reference. We've really created a mess for ourselves here. All right, then we'll just select the type and then color drop that same thing there. Okay, overall, I really do like this composition. Let's go ahead and center this on our page. All right, now I'm gonna select everything except for the background and hit copy. And we're gonna paste in Photoshop as a smart object. Then I'm gonna go back in here and color drop our background color and add a solid color layer. And right out of the gate here, we really do need to start on our distressing. All right, I have this distress texture right here. It looks a lot like a sign. So we're gonna bring this all the way to the top. We're gonna center this up. Now I'm gonna scale this up to the same size and we'll just cycle through some blending modes here. And we're gonna change our blending mode to overlay. And for now, we're gonna hide this layer. And now we're gonna duplicate the same layer, bring our blending mode back up to normal. And now we're gonna go up to select, color range, and highlights. 
and hit OK. And that's made up selection of all of our highlights here. So now we're going to click on our artwork, which is our vector smart object here. And now we're going to hit Command or Control J. And that's going to make a new layer from our artwork out of our selection. So now we can just hide the top layer and hide this bottom layer. So as you can see, we've got that really cool distress look here, although it's eating into it a little bit too much. So what do we do? Well, for now, we just hide this layer, bring this layer back up here and bring this layer back. Again, we're going to go up to select color range. And this time we're going to select midtones. And now go back to our artwork and hit command J again. And now we can hide the top layer and our original layer. And when we turn on both layers, you'll see that we have a lot of that text back. And now we can turn back on our original overlay layer here. And now we have that distressed texture also eating into the type. And now on the layer that had the midtones, we're going to change our blending mode to hard light. And now I want just a little bit of fading right here because when you have a sign like this, it's obviously going to fade over time. And we do have a little bit of that going on here, but we can push it just a little bit more. So let's double click on our top layer. And I'm going to go right here to the blend if section. And I'm going to hold down option or alt on the underlying layer. And we're just going to drag this carrot over just a little bit. I still want that dark blue to be there, but it just kind of gives it a little bit of that fade. All right, and now that I've seen everything kind of assembled together here, there are a few things that I want to change. First off is the type on the top and bottom. It's just getting too lost in that background color. But we've already rasterized all of our type on these layers, so how do we change the color? Well, with our top layer selected, we're going to go right here to Lock Transparent Pixels. And what that's going to do is allow us to color inside of our type. And now we'll just do the same thing here on the bottom. And we could fill in the bottom layer right here. However, if we do that, it's going to fill everything with black, taking away our distressed effect. So what I'm going to do is color drop on this blue. And now we'll just color the bottom layer with that blue instead. Now we can fill in those areas while still getting the same distressed effect we were going for. All right, and a lot of these vintage signs didn't have exact precise placement of the type laying in a straight line. So we're just going to rotate it a little bit. So I'm going to activate the top layer at one degree and I'll activate the bottom layer by 0.75 degree. And the reason I'm doing that is to bring even more of the distressed effect here. Okay, so now on the very top, I want to add a noise layer. So I'm going to do a 50% gray fill, and we're going to go up to filter and add noise. And I think 20% will do just fine. And I want this to be a little bit more on the harsher side because we want it to look like it's metal. All right, color burn is looking really nice. If you zoom in here, you can see that it really does look like a vintage metal sign. And it's going to give us all the effects that we're looking for. All right, so here's that cool vintage soda sign for the Slow Crush album, Hush. It's an awesome album. If you haven't listened to it, then definitely give it a listen. I feel like I just said listen like five times there. If you're a shoegaze fan, you're going to love getting lost in it. It's an awesome album. All right, so in this video today, we went from this to this. And I hope I taught you something today in Photoshop or Illustrator. If I did, please give the video a like and hit subscribe to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.